I'm Barbara Chai with The Wall Street Journal, and we're joined today by Michael Buble, who has a new album, To Be Loved, which will be released on April 23rd here in the U.S. Thanks for joining us, thank Michael. You, Barbara. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having me. I'm really good. Thank you. Let's start with your album. Sure. Uh, one of the original songs and the first song to be released is called It's a Beautiful Day, yes. and it is a beautiful day today. Yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us about the inspiration for this song? Well, I think it'll be surprising to people because the song is not about love or romance. It's about revenge. And uh, the truth is, I wanted to write a song to give people hope. All those people that have been dumped by that jerk of a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or a wife that they have, and realize that after they had their heart broken, that it was the best thing that ever happened for them because this person truly sucked. <laughs> uh, it really is. That's, that's what it's about. I mean, the, my favorite line of the song is, uh, <laughs> um, I'm glad that you're the one that got away. You know, the, the truth is, it's a beautiful day because this person is out of your life. And although it might sound really happy and, and really bright, um, it's kind of like a revenge tune, which is really nice for me because I've done so many, like, I love you and I miss you, my little snooky snooky, and, you know, all of those kind of romantic kind of things. It was nice to write a song with a little bit of edge. Was this inspired by a heartbreak in the past? You know what? Yes. Um, my relationship with Harry Styles. Uh, <laughs> uh, snooky snooky. The way that that damn Taylor Swift <laughs> took him from me. That little... Anyway, minx. No, I just, you know what, of course I've gone through stuff like that where I've had that, but I, the truth is, I've probably been the jerk in the relationship that I'm writing about. So, uh, no, I mean, yeah, everything's inspired by a little, a little bit of life. You know, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of smoke wherever there's fire. But mm -hmm. uh, truth is, no, I just wanted to write an anthem for people who sure. felt like who, that was them. I mean... And your wife's now going to be <coughs> a new mother. You're going to be a new father. I hope so. I hope it's mine. <laughs> you never know. You didn't take the test. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, she's four months, and uh, I've never had a kid before. Uh, so it's the most exciting time in my life, you know? And um, it's funny because I've got all these buddies that are, were so excited for me. And, um, mm -hmm. and I really thought it was genuine love that they had for me. But the truth is, uh, misery loves company. And uh, that's why they were so happy because they now realize that I'm going to never, you know, my, the first thing my buddy Carson said was, you will never sleep again, dude. <laughs> Welcome to my life, man. And, now uh, you understand. <laughs> yeah, he said, now you'll understand why there's poop all over the place in my house and blah, blah, blah. So uh, it's great. I'm looking forward to all of them. I'm looking forward to the drama and the happiness and, uh, you know, it's a really exciting time for me and my family. Mm -hmm. How has the knowledge that you're starting a family change your outlook on your music, both as your art and as your career? Like I said, I think it makes you brave. I think that um, you start to worry less about what people think and, and really about what's important. And so uh, I found a great freedom in this happiness that I had, this new contentment. Um, I think probably um, a fulfillment that I'd never had before. And so. With my music, it was like, you know what, I'm going to be free. I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to take some risks. I'm going to have some fun. And, um, and I think one thing that the people will hear when they hear this record is that it's a different record. I don't know that they'll be able to put their finger on why it's different, but I think that when they close their eyes, they're going to hear me smiling. So you also, I'm just going to list some of the, sure. s the songs that you feature on this new album. Sure. You have hits by the Bee Gees, yeah. To Love Somebody, and yeah. the Jackson 5, Who's Loving You, and Elvis. Mm -hmm. So how do you figure out the balance for yourself between including some hits by some famous hits and original songs that well, you've written? I think the balance for me is that, uh, you know, look at I'm, I'm an interpreter of songs, the same way my idols were, Sinatra or Elvis or, uh, you know, many of them, Fitzgerald, Bobby Darin. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's nice for me to show growth uh, without alienating the 40 million people that bought my record in the first place. Um, and it's fun for me to show growth as a writer just for myself, you know, it's a challenge and um, you know, in this record, I haven't just tried to change, you know, I haven't just written more songs, but I've, it's really, it's an edgier record. I mean, um, <clears throat> it's a Phil Spector record, it's a soul record, and I put myself out there because I was brave, you know, because I was going to have a kid, and I felt like, you know, no one could stop me, and um, the truth was, I was, there was bigger fish to fry and, and bigger things to be worried about than if it sold a zillion copies or if critics liked it or not. Um, and the truth is, because of that bravery and because of that lack of panic, it turned out to be the best record I've ever made, said every artist you ever asked about their <laughs> next record. <laughs> but the truth is, I think the proof is in the pudding. I think when people hear this, I think cream rises to the top, and I have a feeling that uh, the people are really going to dig it. Who are some other contemporary artists that you listen to? Uh, honestly, I spend most of my days listening to Bieber, Justin Bieber, just over and really? over again. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, could be no, true. No, no, I, he's a good kid. <laughs> Harry good, Styles. good Canadian kid. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, what do I listen to? Man, I listen to, you know, I listen, I listen to a lot of my friends. I listen to Blake Shelton. I think Blake is a wonderful mm. guy with a really great voice. Um, I listen to, uh, you know, a lot of Canadian bands, like A Simple Plan. I listen to, um, oh, man, um, God, there's a lot of, it's funny. Uh, now, because of my wife being from Argentina, Juliana de Venega, uh, she has a song called Limon and Salt that I like. Um, uh, Mana is another group I like. Um, I really, really, all kinds of music. I mean, everything from ACDC to Nazareth to to Eminem to you know Michael Jackson. I just love good music. I, I really don't care where it's from or who sings it or when, just as long as it's cool and it has a good groove and moves me. I love it. It's awfully different without you. Don't get around much anymore.